Well, hello and welcome. I'd like to uh, welcome all of our viewers. I'm Dave Biggie. I'm with Aquila. I'm responsible for uh, international sales and marketing. With me today is Brent Vaughn. Brent is coming to us uh, from well down under, down in Australia. And uh, Brent is a Aquila dealer in Sydney and other parts, which we'll have him talk about here in a minute. So let me say welcome to the program, Brent. Yeah, good day, Dave. Thanks for having us. Really uh, great being here. Yeah, it's wonderful, and you know, technology is amazing. And through events and in, uh, in our recent uh, month or two here, we've all become very familiar with how to use much of this technology. Uh, it, it constantly amazes me the time zone changes and how we can communicate. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the end of our day up uh, up here. I'm in Florida today, and it's just the beginning of your day uh, today. So. It's exciting. Yeah, that's right. Juggling lots of time zones and new technology and new skills, but uh, it's been a really interesting period, hasn't it? So, yeah, um, yeah. It's on. interesting. We're finding that it's bringing and developing new ways to sell boats. But before we get into mm -hmm. that, uh, just for our viewers' sake, um, Brent, tell us a little bit about Multi Health Central and uh, you know where your locations are, services you offer, and uh, just a little bit about the company, if you would. Yeah, sure. So Multiel Central has been established for about seven years now. Uh, we have an office and, and a marina that we run uh, in Sydney Harbour, right in the heart of the, the harbour. That's uh, got a range of, of catamarans, as you can see behind us there. And uh, a new new Aquila 44 uh, just arrived yesterday. In fact, it's not in that photo, but uh, I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, in an office in Brisbane at the Royal Queensland Yacht Squadron, uh, which is a great location up there too and a, a partnership in New Zealand so um, and we've got sales reps around the country which is you know we've managed to talk to people everywhere which is really neat so uh, but we we focus and you know really um, really passionate about catamarans and multi holes in general uh, that's what we specialize in and uh, Aquila or Aquila as we call it here is, uh, is a big part of what we do down here yeah, that's great. Yeah, we're very proud of, of what you've done for the brand and, and for the customers in the market. Um, and I do want to ask you later about the popularity of catamarans in Australia. It seems very, very good. Before we do that, tell us a little bit more about you and, and your uh, involvement, how you got involved with the company. I know you've, you've been in the marine industry pr practically your whole life. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, I had a pretty unique I guess upbringing in that my family had a, a holiday home on a little island in the Great Barrier Reef and uh, sort of learned to sail and scuba dive and water ski and pretty much every water sport imaginable up there and, and, and got a real fondness for I guess island life and the sea and obviously had a lot to do with boats um, during that time and while going through uni I worked at the local marina on the mainland there and uh, just, I guess, really early on, got a natural um, affinity with catamarans because, you know, I, I got into racing, you know, beach cats, which were very exciting to race. But also noticed uh, the cruisers coming through the islands were often uh, more and more on big catamarans, which just seemed really comfortable. And the ferry operators all used catamarans. And I just thought, wow, this is just, um, you know, such a, a cool uh, platform and I can't believe more people don't use these. So I naturally gravitated that way and uh, my first job out of uni uh, was with a catamaran manufacturer called Seawind Catamarans here in Australia. They were you know, the biggest, still are the biggest cat manufacturer Australian owns and um, I worked there for 13 some years. And uh, that was, you know, a, an exciting period and um, during that time, we, uh, we we sort of played around with uh, actually some power cats during that time as well. I mean, they built fantastic sailing cats, but uh, it, it, during our time with, uh, I guess, developing and, and selling some power cats, it showed me some serious limitations that power cats that uh, designed from a sailing cat hull have. And, uh, and so later on, um, Seawind moved overseas. I established Multiel Central seven years ago and, uh, and went hunting, I guess, or searching the globe for a dedicated power cat builder. Uh, and someone that focused on it. 
That's and that's interesting. Come across. Really? Tell us, how, how did you uh, become acquainted or familiar with Aquila in the uh, first place? Yeah, so I guess early on when I established Multiel Central, um, I really wanted to have a, a power, a dedicated power catamaran uh, brand that we represented because I I noticed there was a definite open opening in the market, both for people coming out of sailing cats that recognize the benefits of the stability and the efficiency and the space that catamaran brings and, and didn't really want to muck around with sails anymore. Um, but also equally people getting into sailing cats for the first time um, from, from monohull motor, motor yachts who uh, really didn't want to sail, they just wanted the platform, you know, the, the benefits that it brings and I'm trying to work out how to sail and it really, you know, wasn't of that much interest to them. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious that um, the benefits of a cat uh, in a power, power uh, platform makes sense, but just no one had really focused on it uh, so much as a, as a quilla. And yeah. uh, when I come across them doing my research, you know, I researched all around the world and uh, various articles and boat shows and, uh, and, and come across, um, yeah, some reviews that uh, were being done at the time and uh, caught up with Lex and I totally got into his vision, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I guess the innovative way he was approaching some of the designs and what he had in mind and it, and it completely spoke to what you know we were doing and you know what our vision was as well so uh ever since those early discussions with lex i've been on board 100 <laughs> percent yeah no that's great you, you certainly were one of our early adopters as we say you know it, it has always interested me in the you know 30 plus years that i've been in the business at the level of acceptance or um enthusiasm for catamarans in the Australian market. It, can you talk a little bit about why you think the, the boats are so well received and, and desired in your market? Yeah, sure. I think it's got a lot to do with the uh, the natural surroundings that we cruise in. So Southeast Queensland, I guess is known as the heart of, of Catamaran territory. And it's really the gateway to the Great Barrier Reef. And you've got lots of shallower areas, you know, Moreton Bay and and various uh, bars early on that you've got to navigate your way over. And then certainly up inside the Great Barrier Reef, you know, a, a platform that you can live on um, that doesn't have a big deep keel and um, that is efficient so you can lie and go, you know, further distances. Um, so I think very early on, uh, CATS just made a lot of sense in that part of the world. And as more people got into it, you know, the same way I guess I got introduced to it, you know, being on an island, seeing these cats come through, you go, wow, that's really clever. Uh, it makes a lot of sense for, for cruising through these islands inside the reef. And um, and I think, you know, there was just a lot of development early on in Australia, you know, some famous uh, brands or names, designers that have come through, Crowther, you know, Shining Granger, Seawind, obviously over the years. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and and I think it has been, um, you know, a, a big uh, part of the industry here for, for many years. Um, yeah. It's yeah. just amazed me that uh, the development hadn't really been sunken into the power um, side of things for so long, um, which I think is, you know, it's obviously the next logical step the industry will probably go to because so many benefits in that platform um, to be properly designed and developed on a, on a catamaran with, with motors. So yeah, um, I think it's the big sleeping giant in the industry that, uh, you know, we'll see a lot of really uh, exciting development over the next 10 years. Yeah, absolutely. And to your point earlier, the, the, the sailboats that are converted to power don't seem to deliver the same level of both performance, handling, comfort, carrying capacity into, into your space. Um, so many benefits of a boat when it's truly a power boat. What, what in your market area do customers, what sort of feedback do they give you when they are shopping and comparing? What, what do they like or even dislike about, about the comparisons they make when they're shopping Aquila with other competitive brands in your market? 
Well, I guess there's two competitive brands. There's the, you know, the catamaran, you know, power cat brands that are out there at the moment. Um, and certainly over time, I think there's a bit of an education that, uh, that people are understanding the difference between a dedicated, you know, powerboat hull, um, which is so different to a sailing cap hull which is really designed to be pushed, you know, from a center of effort with sails, not from, you know, a couple of 300 horsepower motors pushing it from the back of the boat. So, you know, it's a, it's a very different configuration and, uh, and obviously load, payload capacity and so on. Um, you know, sailing cut hulls are definitely more sensitive to that. And it's a constant discussion we're having when people are looking at sailing cut hulls buying a sailing cat and and obviously you know there's a logical point where you go well are you really wanting to go sailing or are you just wanting to go cruising and likely to be motoring mm. uh, because you know there's a far superior platform to do that on you know and it's it's a power catamaran that's designed with a hull that can handle the sea you know at a bit more speed and is not so sensitive to the weight that you would expect on that sailing shaped hull um, uh, and then you've got people coming in out of motor yachts who step on board an Aquila or Aquila for the first time and just are blown away by the space and um, the fact that you're not so cramped, you know, on board and, and in the cabins, you know, it's just, wow, you know, yeah. for, a, for a 44 footer, uh, you know, it's, it's a boat you'd expect to see, you know, the cabins on a 55 footer when you're in a a motor yacht. So I think there's a coming together there of uh, different worlds and um, and that's where the, the Quilla sort of fits very nicely as, as uh, you know, a comfortable, spacious, uh, portable platform. You know, it's got great floor area um, for living and, and very manageable for people that don't want to go sailing so much <laughs> and just want to go cruising. You know, yeah. so, um, and I think as more people wake up to it and are introduced to the concept over time, it'll just make a lot more logical sense and we'll just see, you know, so much more growth in this area, it's obvious. Yeah, for sure. The, um, there's an iconic photograph that we have used in a, in a number of our advertisements and brochure shots and it's in front of the Opera House and it's yeah. our 36 Aquila. Um, this is an outboard powered catamaran if you would share share with our audience uh, how, how that boat is received, how it's used, feedback you've gotten from customers. Um, let's talk about the 36 as a as a specific model for a minute. Yeah, the 36 is a really uh, neat package, and uh, for Sydney Harbour, you know, it's it's probably the perfect boat. You know, um, and even the local ports around here because it's Sydney Harbour and then we have Port Hacking where I live and Pipwater to the north. And the people that use and own these boats, uh, I guess what they're getting is a lot of the benefits and accommodation, well, entertaining space you'd, you'd seek to have on a big motor yacht. But if in reality you're going out for day trips, weekend trips, and uh, you know wanting to get somewhere fast, uh, you can do it all in this fantastic little innovative package. Um, so yeah, for Sydney Harbour and the surrounding ports here and equally on the Gold Coast, uh, also really popular boat, get somewhere fast, lots of entertaining space, great fishing platform as well. And, um, you know, the, the big bow riding section allows, you know, essentially two groups sometimes, you know, teenage kids and so on, they can mm. do their own yeah. thing up, up front. Um, and what's really exciting is this new uh, cruiser version, the, the closed in door option. Uh, we've just had one arrive here in uh, on the Gold Coast last week, in fact. And um, and I think what that will do is is really allow that boat to go uh, much further afield. You know, we'll see people start exploring up inside the reef uh, in, in Queensland because it, it offers a bit more um, internal, I guess. Uh, comfort and security for mm. overnights and, and longer longer range stuff. So really interesting to see where that goes. But yeah, perfect boat for Sydney Harbour, perfect boat for the Gold Coast. Uh, and anyone that sees it just falls in love with it. Immediately. Yeah, the, the, um, 
The cruiser option that you're talking about with the solid uh, glass bulkhead on the back or the sliding doors on the back, mm -hmm. do you see that boat uh, being able to extend the boating season? Is there a time of year that typically uh, boaters would say it's getting too cold to be boating and that boat can extend that opportunity? Well, I think in Queensland, uh, the, the season's year round, but what we'll probably allow to do is um, close it into provide a bit of air conditioning comfort mm. up north. You know, that's that's uh, real tropical areas. The further north you go in, in summer, I guess. Um, and I guess just some internal comfort for people who want to live on live on the boat to put some of their you know, personal items. But certainly in places like Sydney Harbour, uh, it does get a lot colder during the winter months and Melbourne for that matter. But the winter months are sometimes the most beautiful out in the harbour here. <laughs> You know, like you get these beautiful blue sky days, mild weather, no wind, and the perfect days to head out, you know, to the shop to do some fishing or, you know, back and forth up between Sydney and Pitwater, the local ports here, uh, offshore. And that's a great offshore ride in the 36. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most underrated, uh, unspoken about rides is the, you know, the, the hull shape and how it handles a bit of sea offshore that boat. It's um, an exceptional ride. So yeah, I think it'll uh, it'll give it legs uh, in more of the winter months. So it's not just a day boat, it's a, it's a overnight or weekend, uh, um, you know, weeks at a time, even, you know, doing some longer range stuff, and certainly at winter, um, you know. Yeah. People are itching to get back out on the water at the moment here and uh, and it's just turning cold so <laughs> perfect right now down here <laughs> yeah it's uh yeah the, the 36 cruiser is going to be a it's going to be a, a very popular boat in a number of markets but it's interesting to hear how you see it fitting into uh, into your backyard that's exciting the um the other model that you have had very good success with is the aquila 44 and this is a big boat um Maybe let's talk about that boat and, and talk about which of the features on it seem to be the real attractive uh, offerings for boaters in your market. Yeah, and I think it comes back to what I was saying before, you know, certainly some of the first boats we sold uh, were sold to people coming out of sailing catamarans that instantly recognized the benefit of, you know, a nice big stable open platform. And over time we've seen more and more people come out of motor yachts into that boat and I think I mean the minute you walk on the boat and particularly look at that forward you know master stateroom it's just you know a mind-blowing uh, thing to see on a 44 footer um, and I think the you know the accommodation space and the entertaining areas you know the, the fly bridge on the boat's outstanding you know you've got two seating arrangements with a wet bar and space for barbecue and just the way you move around the boat with the forward uh, stairs down to the to the bow and big open walkways around the side of the boat. It's just very easy to move around on. Big open, good accommodation and entertaining spaces. And I think it speaks to people who want to do some cruising, you know, up, up the coast, uh, but equally have their families out on the boat, you know, for a weekend or entertaining, you know, it's a very versatile package um, and value for money, uh, you know, again, for, for 44 feet, it packs in a huge amount of value, uh, particularly when you're comparing to other motor yachts um, to get that sort of size and, and uh, space. So it's been a natural uh, winner for us for ever since we introduced it into Australia and um, yeah, I mean, we just launched a new one yesterday uh, in Newcastle, which has made its way down to Sydney Harbour. And we have another one coming uh, in a couple of months to Sydney here as well. That's, so, a, that's uh, exciting. And, and that's a model I believe that uh, we've now shipped um, in excess of 100 of them globally. So there's a, a huge fleet of them around the globe. A number of the boats that we have shipped um, the owners have, have made long, uh, long journeys over time. In other words, they've spent, you know, two weeks, three weeks, a month on the boat cruising. Is that anything in, in your market? Do you have owners that are using the boats uh, as a long range or longer term uh, cruising model? 
We've had um, some very keen fishermen uh, take the boat out to the reef and the, the outer shelf. So, uh, you know, Brett Foster had uh, Hull 21, uh, uses that extensively for, you know, long range trips to some of the really nice fishing spots up in Queensland. And the first boat we brought in, hull number 18, uh, went to Western Australia and they take the boat over to Rottnest Island, which is only a day trip away, but they did some really cool mods to that boat to um, set them up to, to essentially live on that boat um, over at Rottnest Island, you know, long term, you know, they've got a uh, utility room and their, their starboard uh, aft bathroom arrangement there. And, yeah, that's uh, cool. And that's a, yeah, a big stand up fridge. Yeah, yeah, and they, 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 they made some nice mods there and, and used their boat and loved their boat. And, and that was hull number 18, and the boat we launched yesterday was hull number 102. <laughs> so, you know, there's been a lot uh, lot happened since then. Yeah. Um, and yeah, a, a number of the other owners uh, are still sort of working towards that. In fact, hull number 104 that we've got coming here in Sydney in a couple of months, that will be the owner's second Quill 44. So, uh, and they're chartering those boats. So they have one in the Whitsundays, which is our sort of tropical island destination. Yeah. And one will be uh, run by our charter company here in Sydney Harbour. And we're really excited about that. I think uh, it's gonna provide a, a really unique product in the, in the Sydney market for, uh, for not only overnights and, uh, and special sort of cruises over a few days. We're packaging some neat stuff at the moment. We'll do like a, uh, a foodies tour of Sydney Harbour. We can go to some of the best waterfront restaurants on the boat and then spend the night, you know, on the boat in a nice anchorage somewhere and look at the Opera House and the, the Harbour Bridge in the background. So some really cool things like that we can do, but also the fact it can take I think, 36 people on the boat for a day, uh, a day trip. Um, is very popular in Sydney for you know, Christmas corporate parties and things like that. So, um, so that's been really, uh, really exciting. And I think um, you know certainly our local tourism market uh, are pretty optimistic about doing well here um, over the next year or two. So we'll see how that uh, works out. But yeah, we've um, we've got some really passionate owners here that uh, love their boats and. Uh, the fact that they're lining up for a second boat is, you know, a real testimony to the to the design. I think. Yeah, that's a good sign. That that speaks to uh, both the boat and to your care. You know how how you service and take care of those customers. And on that note, I I know you have a service team. Maybe just describe for us kind of that overall broad brush view of uh, of your customer service efforts. Yeah, I guess um, you know I decided really early on that uh, I'm a lifer in the industry. Uh, I don't want to do anything else. You know, I, this is something that, that I'm really passionate about and, and love. So, uh, you know, every time we, we sell a boat, I guess um, for us, it's, you know, the, the lifetime relationship with, uh, with that customer, not just a, a single boat. Um, so we hope people come back for their second and third boats. And I've got plenty of customers that are on with their fourth boat. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think customer service is really important and we have a dedicated, uh, service manager Brett uh, based here in Sydney and, and also helps with some of our charter work and uh, you know they coordinate various uh, warranty jobs he does a great job of organizing warranty all around the country with uh, trades people that we've got relationships with that uh, have proven they've got you know good skills and reliability uh, and so we essentially have service bases at our marina here in Sydney at our uh, facility in Brisbane and uh, Ely Beach, where we have a lot of charter vessels uh, and, and trades people that we, uh, we know and trust. Um, so, and I think the, uh, the service and backup from, from Aquila has, has been outstanding. You know, they, uh, they sort of back us up and make sure we get uh, jobs and work done, you know, efficiently. And, uh, and I think that's really important. Yeah, um, for sure. You mentioned charter uh, charter base again. I wanted to, to drop back to that topic. I know that in the United States, uh, Marine Max has had tremendous success utilizing uh, charter as a way for people to become familiar with the brand. They can uh, rent a boat, try before you buy, sort of a phrase I've heard. Do you have any of that type of activity with the uh, boats that are in charter service in Australia? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think in the Whit Sundays, that's the way a lot of people uh, have their first great experience on these boats, and uh, and it's just a wonderful way to introduce your family into um, cruising and boating in a really, you know, beautiful environment up there with the support of you know professional uh, charter operators and managers mm. and they can sort of uh, look after you and you can have a you know bite-sized experience and come back and ponder you know the future and, and really that's why we established our charter uh, business uh, that we call charter boat central to to manage a small fleet of vessels essentially that we can help demonstrate to customers who want to have experiences to test a boat or that to have a, you know, a bite-sized experience before they go and buy a boat mm. but also for us to help provide training experiences you know we run training programs on the other cats and we'll be doing the same for the power cat so people coming into these for the first time don't get so overwhelmed with you know trying to learn it by themselves and making silly mistakes we can show them the ropes and give them accredited uh, training along the way uh, and equally it allows a, a few of our boat owners who we manage vessels for to enable them to buy a boat and have it professionally managed and well looked after and uh, you know have a a nice little business on the side for them uh, running their boat so it's a really nice win-win for everyone um, we're not planning to be the biggest charter company out there but we certainly want to have the best boats and, uh, and really great experiences so i think that's a nice little uh, add-on but certainly anyone that is curious about uh, getting on a, on a power cat and um, seeing whether you know it, it's it's a lifestyle for them or the sort of boat it's a fantastic way to to experience whether it's here in sydney but certainly the whitsundays is a, a magical location um fly in and spend a week up there and you know the problem is once you do it you you're stuffed i mean you know your family <coughs> wants you to buy a boat so <laughs> you're, you're hooked well and what a great what a great concept um there in sydney because it seems like for someone that may be new to boating maybe a little apprehensive about what they don't know, um, but they know that they enjoy it. Being able to have you as a, somewhat of a partner or a steward to, uh, to watch over their investment and, and guide them through that whole process, that seems like, an, a, a, quite frankly, an excellent marketing plan, but it also allows people to fulfill their dream of boat, boat ownership. Yeah, and that's how, um, you know, the, the Kilo 44 that we've got uh, coming this year, I mean, they originally started with one of the sailing cats that we managed for them. Uh, well, actually not for them back then, they, they were running their own charter business, but they saw the benefit of it and the benefit of us running their boat um, later this year. And uh, yeah, for the other boat owners that we have, it's a great way um, so they don't have to worry about their boat being looked after. You know, we've, we've got specialist service people that you know do all of our warranty and um, boat commissioning also lending a hand to manage the vessels and keep them maintained uh, and we we have a little you know little club here that we run that we do weekly um, sailboat races and other social events uh, and the the training aspects that we've partnered with the sailing school Sydney's worked really great with, with the sailing cats, but I think equally to provide some powerboat training, um, not only for the boat owner, so they can learn the ropes and, um, and gain some, some confidence around moving the boats into tight marina spots, for example, is a great way to get started. And equally, people buying their first big boat for the first time, you know, come out of smaller boats and, and this is a, you know, a, first big boat venture uh, it's a nice way to sort of i guess get into it uh, with the support you know some people around you so yeah akila uh you know you've been with it since the beginning you've seen the growth um they have some very ambitious plans and uh, aggressive product development underway um is there anything about any of the new products that you have some insight on that you feel it is appropriate to share in your market? Not to put you on the spot, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, listen, I, I'm seriously excited about the, the Killer 54. I think that's going to be an absolute uh, game change, not only for our market, but I think internationally, I think people really stand up and take notice of, uh, of what the segment uh, has to offer, not just the brand. Um, so, you know, what they've done with the layouts and, and the styling of that boat, I think has really jumped another leaps and bounds. And the 70, which is, you know, it's an enormous um, machine is, is also exciting. But I think uh, some of the other uh, products, and this is like the I think you said aggressive development going on. It's extraordinary what's happening there. I mean, the, the ribs coming through, I think are really cool. Um, you know, and a, an exciting thing that will certainly be putting on the back of uh, many catamarans in this country, I think, again, for the same practical reasons people buy big catamarans also equate to small you know small catamarans and um and talking to lex the other day about the hydrofoiling i mean i mean I, i'm an america's cup uh junkie and uh you know the filling technology that was developed through that and the fact that uh you know uh, gino morelli was involved with uh the, the hydrofoil design that's being attached to the Achilles is, is very exciting because, uh, and I, I think they're approaching it the right way. It's not about getting this boat completely out of the water, which is pretty uh, hair raising. <laughs> it's just using it to the pure efficiency of lifting the boat a little bit out of the water and increasing your hull um, efficiency, and your fuel efficiency, uh, but still being completely controllable. And I think it's just a, obvious thing that you know it's been played around with on different boats hydrofilling for many years but i think uh, lex has got the real right approach and uh, it'd be exciting to see that on some boats in the future uh, particularly the bigger ones to be honest i think you know they're seeing uh some power uh, boats that can can increase their fuel efficiency just by attaching something that's you know obviously highly engineered but pretty simple uh in reality you know, it's not moving there's no you know rake adjustment or anything i'm not like on the america's cups it's, it's yeah. static it's attached to the boat you set and forget and you just yeah. enjoy the the economy of it and you know i mean there's a cost of it up front but i think when you look at the life of these boats that are you know 20 years on the the fuel benefits that that would have given that vessel over that time will be huge. Yeah, the, the conversations I've had with so many people about the foil, the, the logic part of it is you can spend a, a certain amount of dollars to do an engine upgrade, or you can spend that money on a foil. It's about the same dollars, the dollars trade. The difference though is over the life of the boat, when you can get a third more efficiency out of your your uh, fuel you think about that think about if i knew i have a 30 percent more range or a third more range could i you know, can i go farther or can it can it cost me less to go for a long weekend or the the efficiency benefits far uh, more quickly pay back any any uh, difference in cost when you talk about adding that to the boat and and the theory behind the foil being uh, it's a, it's an assist it assists in lifting the boat and reducing the drag, unlike the America's Cup, which, I mean, you're flying. You're truly flying. Yeah. This is um, kind of like, uh, I don't want to use the word tail dragging, but that's kind of an aeronautical uh, reference, I guess. And to your point, it's it's very it's very reliable, very predictable. Um, I think it's going to, I think it's going to radically change how people see boats, especially in the power catamaran business. So yeah, it, it's exciting. And the, um, the 36s that you have in the market, I understand you have some that can be retrofitted. Is that, is that accurate? Yeah, the, the, some of the later models uh, we can retrofit. So I think once we start seeing uh, some of those boats with them out there and, and the results, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some retrofits happen. But I think to your point, and I think it's a really good point that you make in that the hydrofoil is there to assist with lift where you you can go down the same path by putting more power on the boat to assist with lift and pushing the boat out of the water. So you can potentially offset pushing the boat with bigger motors or substituting that with the hydrofoil, smaller motors with more efficiency and over time, like the benefit will be 
exponential, I would think. But uh, yeah, we're 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 hoping that uh, we'll get one of those down here very soon and, and start playing with them. I think maybe even on the commercial side, um, you know, we, we have an opening in our fleet for a, uh, a charter uh, killer thirty six. We'd love to have you know running and managing here in Sydney. I think that would probably be a logical thing to do with that boat, you know, because they'd be obviously running a lot of engine hours on it and uh, might uh, pay for itself, you know, shorter than most. Yeah, certainly, certainly. The um, the, the market in Sydney, tell me a little bit about um, promoting the brand and uh, marketing. Now you have uh, traditional boat shows, when are those and, and what shows will you be uh, displaying in? Yeah, so I mean, this year is a little bit odd, obviously, and uh, we've had all our boat shows cancelled on us, which is a real shame. Um, but next year we'll be at, at all the shows again. So the first will be the Sanctuary Cove boat show on the Gold Coast in May. Uh, we have the Sydney boat show in uh, in late July, early August. Uh, and then we also do the Auckland boat show every year, which is usually, usually September. Uh, so that's next year, but this year we'll be probably running some little micro boat shows on our own uh, here in Sydney and in Brisbane. Uh, once we have some boats, new boats to, to show and uh, demonstrate. Uh, and we will be doing some really um, cool video uh, demos, I guess. We're doing more boat demonstrations uh, to really help, I guess, give people insights to uh, how the boats are operated and the benefits and where they sort of sit in the marketplace actually on the water as opposed to just being sitting static at a boat show. Um, so I guess the force uh, removal of the shows is, is really allowing us to develop some more of those uh, marketing uh, strategies as well, which I think is a healthy thing to do. You know? um, yeah. it's, it's really helping us explore some other opportunities for customers to understand the boats. So. And I think I've been made aware that you have, um, you've also done some smaller uh, private events, some more intimate events. How would, how would someone get involved if they were interested in, uh, in seeing the boats and meeting you and your team on a, on a more intimate uh, basis? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we, we do, um, you know, small inspections and, uh, and viewings of, of vessels, um, you know, all around the country. So we have a sales team pretty much in, many areas of the country so uh yeah just get in touch with us on our either our website which is multihillcentral.com uh or email us uh, sales at multihillcentral.com and uh we can set you up with an inspection uh, with one of our uh, sales team to uh to have a look at either either range either model of the killers that we've got in most locations now around the country so uh, that's that's pretty simple to do uh, and there's no boat show required to do that. Uh, and often it's, uh, it's sometimes more rewarding to sit down um, with the, the hustle and bustle of a show and, and get a proper tour of a boat uh, and even maybe a, a demonstration um, if, uh, if you're keen to go to the next stage. So that's, uh, that's quite easy to do, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I also, your team um, has been very active in YouTube. I think, I feel like I know many of the people that work with you just because I watched their videos on YouTube, but there's a lot of material or content that you have published onto YouTube as well, right? Yeah, that's right. So we've got a really active uh, YouTube channel uh, that we call Sea Baticals uh, by multi -L Central at the moment. So the idea of that is, uh, I guess, giving people really good boat demos uh, and, and showing how they are on the water as much as they are at the marina or at the dock. Um, but then equally uh, strategies in around ownership. So whether it's uh, charter boat ownership programs, syndication programs, uh, and you know some of the secondhand boats that we move as well. So yeah, we're, we're diving big time into the into the YouTube space and some of our videos are you know, over 300,000 views, which is extraordinary. Uh, and we've only really been doing it for the last 12 months. So um, we, we're sort of taking it a bit more seriously now. So it'll be interesting to see where it all goes, but um, certainly, you know, watch some, watch some space here in the future for some new uh, Aquila videos coming out over the next uh, next few months. Uh, yeah. to get them out there. 
Yeah, that's great. That's you. You're very, you're very much a part of the Aquila family because you you embrace the product and uh, and your team is is very passionate about it, which is exciting for us to see around the globe. And I know you've traveled, um, you've traveled pretty much around the globe, showing and selling Aquilas. I, I've we've personally uh, seen each other in France and in the U.S. Where, where else have you been that I, in your travels? <laughs> Um, yeah, I've been to lots of boat shows around the world. Um, the, the States is, is a really uh, great place for us to get. Um, I used to do the Miami Boat Show every year and uh, we get there when we can. Uh, the Cannes Boat Show in France obviously is a really important one and La Grand Mop down there as well. Uh, Dusseldorf Boat Show in Germany. Um, you know, the Genoa Show in, in Italy. Um, and obviously New Zealand, uh, the Auckland Show is important for us here. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it's really uh, important to get out and see, you know, the industry and see the innovation that's happening out there and, and different uh, uh, people in the industry and catch up. I mean, a lot of my friends are scattered all around the world that we usually catch up at boat shows, so it's quite unique. Um, but yeah, that's it's something I've been doing for 21 years now. Um, in fact, I think this year is my first year off doing uh, our local boat shows here in 20 years. So um, but it's, it's a fun place to catch up with everyone. And it's a really important thing, I think, for customers, you know, uh, to get to the, to see a big range of boats and you know, pretty quickly you can, you can understand uh, what they all look like and how they work. But equally, I always say, you know, make sure you get out for a run on the boat too, if you have the opportunity and mm -hmm. see it up close uh, without the hustle or bustle sometimes that's, uh, that's great, but yeah, uh, this year's uh, hibernation this year and uh, we'll look forward to the boat shows again next year, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I, I want to compliment you because I know you have worked hard to uh, build the business and, uh, and the team that you have. It's very clear what a great resource you are for the boating community, uh, especially those customers that are, are loyal members of your boating family. Uh, and I'm just, I'm proud that Aquila is part of that and want to thank you for all that you've done for the brand and the market and taking care of the customers. And it's, uh, it's been a good run and I think it's just getting better and better. So uh, it, it's been very, very uh, rewarding. Yeah, thanks very much, Dave. And, and we, uh, as I said to Lex not long ago, we're, uh, we're Aquila's number one fan down here. Uh, you know, we're, we're big uh, advocates of the brand and, and really the vision, I guess, of, where it's going and what it stands for um, so we yeah we're big fans and uh, really exciting times ahead so we're uh, very happy to be associated and part of the part of the family as you say well that's great and just a, a reminder for our audience uh, you're very active in the, on, on all the social media channels but multihullcentral.com locally if you want to get a hold of Brent and aquilaboats.com if you need any additional information on the product line or have any other questions uh, but we're all here to, to uh, serve the boating community. And as I like to say, we're, we're changing boating, uh, you know, one hull at a time. We just get to do it with two on our catamarans. <laughs> <laughs> Twice as fast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, yeah. Brent, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to visit with us. And uh, as always, keep up the great work and happy boating. Yeah, thanks, Dave. And uh, we'll catch up with you in the next boat show.